Hello, everyone. Welcome again to the Israeli Academic Forum for Impact Economy. Um, we are very happy that you're here today and decided to um, join this session. I will start uh, by, with an apology or a possible apology. I'm currently in Kigali, Rwanda, and I did my best to find um, the best connectivity and Wi-Fi. Uh, but um, in the unlikely event that I will have some connectivity issues, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Leah Gu, who is the facilitator of this session. Leah, say hi. Uh, she's an intern of the Israeli Forum for Impact Economy and has been working very hard behind the stage um, to make this session happen. She will also communicate with you uh, via the chat and again, we'll take over if needed. Uh, a few housekeeping. Um, towards the end of the session, we will have Q&As. Feel free to just uh, send your questions through the chat uh, to Leah to tell us if it's um, directed to any one of our panel members or to all of them, and we will try to address a couple towards, towards the end. Also, we will be sending links um, in the chat throughout the session, so please open them in your browser because uh, towards the, the in the end of the session, you will just lose them. So if you really want to engage, just open them and you can read them later. Um, on the screen now, you can see our short agenda. Um, Leah, the next slide, please. Okay, until we get the next, um, next slide, I will just say that um, we will be welcoming you. We will shortly have a very short um, Zoom poll. Uh, we will hear from our panelists, the, their perspective, and um, have a short discussion. And then we'll have um, time for some Q&A. So this session is all about the, world, uh, the role of academia in researching, promoting, teaching, and of course, criticizing the emerging concept of uh, the social economy, impact investment, and maybe more broadly, social innovation. And as Vanessa mentioned, um, the forum will establish different working group. Hopefully one of them will be academia and impact. And its goal will be to support all the five pillars of work the forum will uh, engage with and also hopefully um, have opportunities to create alliances and collaborations between academia and practitioners and help enhance the work that uh, Edmond de Rothschild Foundation is already doing in the space of, of impact economy within academia. So hopefully this will event will be one of many and to help us be better understand your needs uh, and interest in this area, we will share a Google survey towards the end and would very much appreciate in a day or two if you can take your time and just let us know um, your work and your interest around uh, impact economy within your academic work so we can um, have uh, be better for prepared to next session. And so now before we continue, um, if you can please take a very short Zoom poll um, that is supposed to be on your screen right now. Leah? Yeah. Okay, so who is in the room? What do you do? Are you a university faculty member, a student, entrepreneur, government? Okay, in order to keep on with time, I'll unfortunately have to end the poll, but it's great to see uh, we have diverse represent uh, representatives. Um, and yeah, so my role here is to basically ask the question, but before we do that, let me just briefly introduce myself. Um, I'm not an academic myself. Um, although since returning from the UK about a year and a half ago, I've been working in the intersection between academia and social impact. Uh, first as the head of academic programs in ACTO, the Center for Impact Investment and in, in Entrepreneurship in Coleman College. And then more recently as a lecturer and a team member of uh, Haifa University Innovation Lab. Um, in the UK, I've completed a master's in public administration, um, and I'm also a graduate of Oxford Social Finance uh, executive course. Um, in my professional work, I lead consultancy and research um, on many different social innovation uh, topics, but specifically on impact investment and tech entrepreneurship in, in Africa. Um, and I would dare to say that social innovation is a space that because it's maybe relatively uh, new, even though we have here people on the panel with much academic experience, um, it's not surprising to find non-academics involved in the field, and we might touch a bit upon uh, on that later. So it is my great pleasure to introduce you our first speaker, Eli Buch, the Rothschild Foundation Director of Philanthropy. Hi, Eli. You can wave to everyone. Hello. 
Hi, I'll just say a few words about you and then um, just move on to some questions. So since 2009, Halle, Ellie has been responsible for the Foundation Philanthropic Management and for the developing and implement, in implementing its strategy, particularly in the field of entrepreneurship, leadership, success in higher education and academic excellence. Previously, Ellie established educational programs in both Israel and the US and was the founder and executive director of Kavla Zinuk, an NGO that developed leadership and social entrepreneurship. He is married to Merav and has three children. Um, so thank you, Ellie. Um, we are very share, uh, happy uh, that uh, you joined us. And if you can share a bit about your perspective of what is the role in philanthropy in general in kind of promoting impact, uh, social impact generally and specifically um, within academia and what is the role of Edmond de Rothschild Foundation? Um, what is its vision um, for impact within the Israeli Academy? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Stav. And <clears throat> it's great to be here on the panel with, you know, I'll give the local view and then we have the, uh, the, the international perspective, and I think that's important to kind of get the full, uh, the full picture. Um, it's good to see some of the people, but obviously challenging in these days. Uh, you know, we, we can't see everybody and there's not the real interaction that we would like to all have in, in such an event. Um, so I'll, I'll say regarding impact, our, our foundation, I mentioned earlier, has been involved in impact in the past uh, several years. Actually, I'll talk about philanthropy has a unique role in, in the field of impact. And, and I think it's mainly dealing with infrastructure because there's so many players and actors and we have investors and we have entrepreneurs and there's lawyers and business. It's going to be it's a variety of players in this huge field of economy, impact economy. Um, philanthropy's unique role, even though we serve as investors and we've invested as well, but it's not in necessarily in the investment, it's in building the infrastructure and the academia has a main, main role here in how, you know, in how to build in the infrastructure and how to educate the next generation of the entrepreneurs, the next generation of the uh, investors, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, everything is in academia in terms of being able to really make the uh, significant revolutionary change that Sir Ronnie Cohen was talking about, making that change, academia is crucial in, in, in building, you know, build, being the infrastructure for such an, an amazing uh, change. Now, for, from our perspective as a foundation, we're a foundation that have been focused for many years on higher education. That's basically what we deal with. And several years ago, well, I guess seven or eight, this is how we kind of entered the, the impact world. I uh, heard Sir Ronnie Cohen speaking about, you know, the first social impact bond as many of you uh, are familiar with uh, in the UK. And, and then I said, wait, we were in the middle of a program, a philanthropic program to reduce dropout rates from higher education. And we all know there's big issues with dropout rates, definitely now, but even uh, much earlier. And then suddenly when I, when I heard him speaking about uh, recidivism, etc., I said, wait, it makes sense also in the structure in Israel, at least, of reducing dropout rates. Why? The government pays the academic institution and, and it pays it more if more students complete their degree. So if I were to take private funding and put it into interventions that help reduce dropout rates, every extra student, obviously we have a social goal here, more students can uh, complete their studies, but at the same time, the academic institution gets more money and, and, and will bring it back to the uh, investors. I'm happy to say today after you know, four or five years, um, we have excellent 30% dropout 30% less dropout, of course. And, and we're looking at, 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 at profit here, even though we haven't ended it yet. So we don't know the exact uh, numbers. And just last month, the uh, university, one of the universities we were in, we were in computer science, adopted the uh, concept and are building like a system for uh, reducing dropout rates. So I'm giving this as an example that higher education has several 
roles in, 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 the, in or in, under, uh, under, under um, everything to do with impact. It could be using impact to tackle specific issues such as reducing dropout rates and then certain other issues that we could find unique models to, to, to do. That's one role. A second role is to educate, I guess, uh, the, 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 the students. A third role is research, of course, and creating that knowledge in this entire uh, field of impact. I could even say maybe a fourth role is, is sort of an R&D because much of the development of the research from academia could serve as impact enterprises eventually. So that's four roles for the academia. And I think it's uh, crucial uh, creating that systematically. It's starting in Israel, but hopefully it will grow as other places in the world are growing. Thank you, Eli, for this um, great and kind of very comprehensive answer. And this also gives me an opportunity to thank you uh, and the Edmond Rothschild Foundation on my behalf and behalf of my colleagues in the in Haifa University, Professor Roni Stiar and Dr. Mariana Gmon, as you, um, we have been uh, given a grant by you to actually research uh, impact programs in universities across the world. So we will be talking uh, to people such as Professor uh, Megan Kashner and Annie Patton Power, and then also also people um, from Israel um, that are offering different impact programs and together to try and construct our recommendations on how we can deepen the impact and widen the impact of acad academy uh, work in this field. So um, thank you very much. Uh, our next guest is Professor Megan Kashner, who is the clinical assistant professor within, within Kellogg Public Private Inter Interface Initiative and director of social impact. Hi, Megan. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, so I'm, I'm so pleased to be here. Thank you for, for including me. Oh, thank you for getting up um, early in the morning in Chicago and, um, and joining this panel. Um, I'll just say a few words about, uh, about you and your work. Um, in her leadership of Kellogg's social impact offering, Megan focuses on the areas of impact investment, social entrepreneurship, sustainability, nonprofit management, policy, global development, values, and ethic. Megan leads up the Global Impact and Sustainable uh, Impact and Sustainable Finance Faculty Consortium, which Leah will send a link to. I'm a member, and I would very much recommend um, all the people here to try and engage. And also the Kellogg Morgan Stanley Sustainable Investment Challenge. She has spoken at the White House and at national conferences on social innovation. She has been featured in CNN, at the Financial Times, and the New York Times, and more. Megan, can you tell us a bit more about your work as the director of social impact at Kellogg, kind of in general and specifically in the um, um, in the impact and sustainable finance um, faculty consortium? And it will be extremely interesting to hear, as we mentioned, um, impact in academia is relatively a new kind of term and field. And you can share with us what are the main mechanisms and research from your experience that have been critical in promoting this field. Thank you so very much. So my role at Kellogg, which is the business school of Northwestern University, is to bring together and coordinate all of, all of our courses, researchers, student programming, speakers, and external programming around social impact. But that actually gets to um, sort of the first part of your question, which is, how does social impact appear in, in academia? And the truth is that we are not one field. And that's what makes my role and roles like mine incredibly difficult. If you think about social impact in academia, what are we teaching? What are we researching? We're researching and teaching impact innovation and social entrepreneurship, impact investment, sustainable finance, social finance, public finance, pay for performance contracting, sustainable business practices, corporate social innovation, nonprofit and philanthropic leadership and efficacy. Clearly, I wrote this list out, right? Um, impact measurement and quantification, and then all of the issue specific topics, including education, public health, sustainability, economic development, global development, gender and ethnic equity, clean energy, right? This list could go on and on. And so when when we think about the field of social impact, we have to recognize that there is no, no field, right? There is a 
there is a combination, there's a collaboration and there are connections, but there's not a, not a singular field. So your question was really what has worked to promote this kind of research in these academic areas. At Kellogg, we have right now just for our MBA students, we have more than 35 courses, mainly electives, that cover a broad range of the fields I was just mentioning. And at Kellogg, as an example, for over 40 years, our business school has approached social impact as a management discipline. Starting back in the 1970s with courses on nonprofit governance and management, all the way up to today with courses that span impact investment and sustainable finance, public finance, uh, education, consulting, uh, you, you know, right, you name it, uh, decision making for sustainable business, impact measurement. So what, what has worked to promote these academic areas? The number one thing, and maybe this is particular to the business school environment, but, environment, but I hope that it's not, is really student demand and student interest. Students come to us with their own understanding of the world, their own knowledge of the world, and their own beliefs and hopes for how they can take their professional selves in the future and make the change, be part of the change that they want to be a part of. And so really the students reflect what's happening in the broader world, um, as well as what the demands of employment and employers might look like as they go out into the marketplace. So then you have to look at the market, right? So what else has helped to promote social impact in academia? Changing market demands. We need globally business leadership and decision-making that understands and incorporates impact, sustainability, quantification of impact, right? You know, con assessment of context and causality. The other piece that I would that I would mention, I've got a couple more, is the changing nature of financial decision making and investment direction globally. Right? We heard this morning about how much money is flowing into impact finance and how much more money than that is is being now invested with an eye towards ESG and social responsibility. What else works to promote social impact in academia? Of course, it's faculty research, faculty interest, right? When we get our tenured and tenure line faculty diving into these incredibly important topics, it drives everyone forward in terms of the tools, the quantification methods, you know, the research basis, the, you know, the, the evidence for everything that we do. The changing nature of our world and obviously our climate promotes our work in these academic areas and also our sort of our fairly newfound ability for global transparency and communication. Nothing, nothing much can be hidden anymore. Transparency is here whether companies uh, and employers and the public and governments want it or not. So we launched the Impact and Sustainable Finance Faculty Consortium back in 2017, uh, and Ani has been a member since the very, very beginning, um, <laughs> to help bring together academia's, academics, I'm sorry, in one of these columns, right? One of these verticals, which was simply academics, faculty members who are teaching and researching in the areas of impact investment and sustainable finance. So you've got the link in the chat to that. We now have over 200 members from over 100 universities in more than 25 countries. And we convene for one big time each year uh, together to learn from one another. How do you teach? What do you teach? What cases do you use? What exercises have you developed? Hey, do you mind if I borrow your syllabus, right? The price of joining that consortium is actually you have to share your syllabus, right? You have to come into the community of academics saying, I'm here and I'm ready to share. The second thing that you mentioned was our uh, Kellogg Morgan Stanley Sustainable Investing Challenge. The link is in the chat, I believe. If it's not, I'll throw it in there. Um, please encourage your students, any graduate students, to consider engaging in that. And then for that final sort of academic push around research, Kellogg now runs uh, the Moskowitz Prize for, for, responsible for research in, in responsible finance. The, um, we pick the top research paper in ESG and responsible finance each year. 
the submissions are due in June, we make the announcement in November, and I'll share that link as well. Okay, I've clearly taken more, more than my time, but I hope I at least answered your question. No, definitely you did, which was a big challenge and also I think extremely relevant information to all of our participants. And I, I mean, I very much related to what I think in between you kind of said that the field itself is not only about collaboration, but it requires collaboration. And that's true between sectors, but it's also true within academia. So thank you. Thank you very much. So last and definitely not least, it's my pleasure to introduce you all to Ani Patton Power. Hi, Ani, all the way from South Africa. Hello, thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. I'll just say a few uh, brief words uh, about you. So Ani is the founder of Intelligence Impact, an innovative finance advisory firm and a, and a university lecturer on innovative finance, impact investing and technology for impact. At the University of Oxford Said Business School, she holds the title of Associate Fellow as well as Entrepreneur in Residence at the Skoll Center for Social Entrepreneurship. At the University of Cape Town, to graduate School of Business, she's a senior advisor to Bertha Center of Social Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Ani's work has been published throughout the world and very exciting, her first book, Adventure Finance, will be published in 2021. So we're all excited. And um, I'll also say that um, I had the privilege of attending one of Ani's classes when I was at, um, at Oxford at Sage Business School. Uh, so great memories uh, from that. Um, so Ani, your bo work bo combines both academic research and teaching, as well as professional work in the field of impact investing and technology um, and, 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 and technology for impact. From that perspective, how do you say should academia and practitioners work more closely together in order to enhance the sector of impact investing and kind of create win-win situation? Absolutely, and thanks again for having me. I won't repeat what Megan said. I mean, I think that <laughs> Megan has been very much leading a lot of this collaboration. I think what I would add to it is my experience is I do a lot of executive training um, so in addition to the MBA um, and other graduate teaching that I do, I do a lot of executive training and it's a really great opportunity because so many people in the impact investing space are coming into this mid-career as a, also, you know, early career, all, as Megan said, all the graduate students everywhere want to do this. Um, so, you know, there's tons and tons of um, demand there, but I think that, you know, the executive education, which Stab, you attended, you know, the course we do at Oxford, I think there's just so much hunger um, for people that are, you know, senior leaders that are really interested in how to do, um, how to make impact investments, how to create strategies, how to, you know, all of these different pieces. And so in addition to research, which is incredibly important, and I think, you know, more case studies, um, more, you know, more data points that people can use, all of the things that we need to be able to teach classes. But I, I do really think executive courses and um, online courses and ways in which we can really um, blend together practical experience with the academic oversight and the understanding um, of being able to look across the industry. Um, one of the things we can do in academia that is so powerful is that we can pull together lots of different stakeholders um, and be able to take a 30,000 foot view as opposed to the very specific, you know, I do equity investments in Latin America, you know, being able to pull up to that view and say, right, how should we think about how impact investments should be made? How should we think about public policy? How should we think about the enabling um, environment. And so there's just, there's a lot to be said about not just research, but actually engaging executives and senior leaders in rooms, whether they're virtual or real rooms around trainings and being able to learn from them, but also have people learn from each other. And so I think that, you know, these types of, of trainings that, you know, continue to be more, continue to be offered are really important in addition to everything, you know, that Megan's been working on. And I've been working on with Megan too, not just Megan. <laughs> work me everyone's been working on Megan's been leading in a lot of ways um but um you know that there's there's a lot that we can do together I think that's a really valuable point and we see that also in Israel uh, I mean yeah, Megan talked about the, the kind of the student uh, drive and Ellie talked about more research but really there's a lot of practitioners already with one degree, two degrees, but they are very keen to learn more. And then how do we engage and kind of develop um, programs for them? That's an excellent point. So then uh, to all of our panel members and Jen, just um, feel free to jump in. What do you believe 
are the trends that are shaping social impact within academia. Um, Eli, if you can maybe refer to Israel specifically and then Megan and Ani maybe on a kind of a global international perspective. Can I, can I start, Steph? Yes, Ani. Um, so just globally, I would say that, you know, and this is, I'm a little bit biased, um, but I really think there's a lot more of a focus on how we invest, not just what we invest in. So this has been part of, I mean, this has been my work for a decade and what my book is on, um, but really understanding not just are we having investments that create impact, but examining ecosystems and individual entrepreneurs and saying, are the types of investments we're making really creating the change? that we want to make. So, you know, the idea of using equity investments is, is really sexy, but the need for exponential growth and third party exits and lots of different pieces that, you know, replicate traditional financial markets may not be the best way for us to actually you know, create systems change. Um, and so I think that thinking about the how um, and not just the why is a bit of a maturation of the space um, as we you know, continue to globally look at how do we best support SMEs um, and you know, small business owners and other big vital parts of the impact economy. I'll jump in next. Please, this is Israel. <laughs> I think one of the biggest trends I'm seeing is moving from the edges to the center, right? The, the questions that we tackle and, and and this was said earlier, I think Ellie, this might've been you, to say it's something that might've been radical 50 years ago is now not radical anymore. Um, and so finding ourselves suddenly moving from what might've been a fringe, what might've been an edge of a number of disciplines into the center of management, strategy, finance, into the disciplines of uh, you know, major finance, of consulting, of business leadership, and many other disciplines, it's a shift and in academia we have to follow that shift right we have to we have to lean in if you will to that shift the other trend that i'm celebrating right now is i'm seeing so much more engagement and partnership between research faculty and clinical faculty that's what we call them professors of practice is another word for that um, and then practitioners out in the in in the field um, in the US, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about this. We are seeing a, an incredible trend shaping our conversations around social impact around our spring and summer of reckoning with regard to racial justice and structural inequity. And, and this one follows within academia, a trend that I, that I talked about a minute ago. Earlier, I was an outlier for my teaching, for as I taught my students about structural inequity at the intersection in the US of history, public policy, and market forces. And now other faculty members are coming to me and saying, how do you teach these topics, right? How do you approach them? How do you adapt them to the subject that you're teaching? And so, so that, that's another thing to celebrate, is a bringing into the center of the issues and topics that we've been addressing and concerning ourselves with for so long. Okay, so I'll jump in to, to give the, the, the local perspective, or at least my local perspective. Um, <clears throat> and it's, it's phenomenal to see what's going on in the world, not only here, but now hearing you, Megan, about the, you know, the forum, the international forum, hopefully we'll help get some Israeli uh, uh, academics into that uh, forum as well. But I must say that Israel as a startup nation is behind in, in uh, at least in my view, in terms of where academia is uh, regarding the impact revolution. Uh, I think we're still in our first steps um, and it's not yet being adapted quick enough. We've learned from this field and other fields that you know it suddenly happens, it can happen this year. And we're starting to see, I think after several years um, of us, as, I'll, at least I'll give you know our own perspective as a foundation, doing several things, and I'll mention them. Uh, there's now more and more interest from the academia. As philanthropy, you wanna you know you wanna be that trigger. So we help create the ACTO, the first impact center in Israel, um, and it's and it's funded by philanthropy to begin with, 
And then we did a call for proposals on research and then a call for proposals on, uh, on uh, courses, academic courses. We have now 15 academic courses across the country. Um, and all of this is the beginning. So people, when they eventually understand what it is, they'll go for the call for proposals, you know, there, there's funding there. But the ideal and where we want to go is, is that it's the interest of the academic institutions. Like you said earlier, Megan, because it's the interest of the students, because they understand that's the new world that they need to prepare to. Now, in some cases, we see that in academia already, um, but in many cases, not, I think, not yet. And, uh, and it's not there yet. What, what are we seeing? We are seeing three, I don't want to even call them trends, but beginning of trends, okay? One is the, the idea of impact centers. So after this ACTO impact center, there's now word about several other centers, at least we've been approached, other academic institutions that want to create such impact centers, which is significant because it's in the center of the, of the, of the um, uh, university. And, and the second is trying to be maybe an expert in a specific field. It's beginning to happen, food tech, or, or, or uh, you know, tech for good, or something where uh, um, uh, uh, an academic institution, the university says, okay, this is something impact related that I wanna be an expert in. So research, et cetera, and teaching. And the third, which, is, which I've heard one university speaking about, and maybe that's what you know better, is really, incorporating the values of impact into everything that happens in the academia, having the impact courses as mandatory courses in some places because it's part of what you need to know. Um, but even more than that, you know, it, it, it could be in, in several, there are several ways that an academic institution can adopt the issue of, uh, of impact strategically. So I know one place that is speaking about it now, but, but I, I think again, that's, that's part of the next step. And that demand from the academic institutions um, is beginning. And I hope, I'm hoping to see a jump there pretty soon and I'm sure we will. Thank you, Ellie and Megan and Annie for kind of identifying those trends. And we're actually getting towards the end of the session. So the last question I will ask um, to answer maybe in a sentence before opening up to Q and A's. And this is also a reminder to our participants to please kind of um, channel your uh, question to the chat. So um, to conclude the session, what would you say that is your golden tip your recommendation for our audience um, on how to advance impact program within their institutions. So maybe we'll go the other way around now, Ellie, Megan, Ani. Sure. <laughs> um, I think the golden tip, I guess I would say from the experience that I have, and it's connected to what I said earlier, if you are, whoever you are in an academic institution and you understand the big thing that's happening here now in the world economy. And you understand that your academic institution needs to be there. You need to get the leadership to, to really buy into it, to really understand. The real changes are when the leadership, be it the you know, president of the university or, or, the, or the, the, the rector or others, or head of faculty, they need to buy in in order for something to really happen. Otherwise, it's okay, we can do pilots here and there and, 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 and that's good and that's a good start. But that idea of getting the leadership in academia to buy in to, to, to what's, what we're talking about here and to really understand it because you don't understand it in a second, I think that's a huge challenge and that would be my tip for anybody that wants to create that change in academia. I will jump in and I'll try and be shorter than I've been. Uh, my, my recommendation is that we collaborate across academic areas with practitioners, with policymakers, and even with activists, that we build those bridges by listening, reading, meeting one another, and that we focus our work much more on looking at and helping our students look at the factors that led to a problem and that that buttress or hold up that problem and what it will take to change that rather than simply ameliorating or alleviating the effects of that problem. 
I definitely agree with the collaboration. And I'll just say, you know, as you're thinking, if it, a way to do collaboration is to create courses that do cut across different faculty. And going back to what I said before, you know, executive courses that are short courses online and, you know, hopefully someday in person are great ways to do, um, to cut across faculty, um, even within different schools. Uh, one of the things that we really enjoy doing is cutting across the law faculty and the management faculty in impact because there's just so much there. And so I regularly teach across those different um, schools and try and pull together courses. So against, you know, collaborate across schools, but short courses offer a great opportunity to really test the demand as well. Thank you for all this really great golden tips. Uh, I think we'll have only time for one or maybe two questions. Um, so one is for Megan and this is from Aya Navon, a PhD student in the Hebrew University. And she asks, uh, do you see a trade-off between moving to the center and being critical of different forms of inequality, et cetera? I love this question. Yes, there could be a trade-off. And, and in impact finance in particular, I'm concerned about this, right? As more and more millions and billions of dollars purport to be invested in impact investing and sustainable finance, is there a dilution, dilution effect? But but Aya's question is more about um, how do we maintain our ability to remain critical? And I think there's so much room, right? If someone takes one weight off of our shoulders, we still have all the others, right? So if, so, if suddenly there is a recognition of one level or one, one, one bit of inequality, there are still all those others and it frees us up to have the conversations and the credibility that we need to address even those issues that are not top of my, mind right now. And that might not be, as, as we might say in the US, might not be sexy, right? Um, and so as we move further into the center, the, our beliefs don't have to, right? We can bring our outside um, and our, our view and our lens on inequity to the table once we're invited in. I'm on mute. Thank you um, for that. And maybe we have time for one, um, uh, one more from Galia from Tel Aviv um, University. And she has a question, to what degree do you find that courses on ESG rating and impact evaluation are boosting students to consider engaging in impact economy jobs after the for their formal education? Ana, you should help answer this question. My, my brief answer is, uh, I don't, our students are interested in engaging in impact economy jobs. That's not a problem. Getting our students interested in the quantification necessary and the skills and the minutia necessary to understand impact evaluation and ESG ratings, that's actually the harder piece. Ani, you want to jump in? No, I agree. I actually think it's the other way around. Like getting them to do impact evaluation is the tough part. You know, they want to allocate the money. They don't want to figure out how to, you know, measure the impact. Okay, thank you very much. We'll need to um, wrap. Um, we have a comment and then we'll have to, um, yeah, um, Galia from Tel Aviv University says, thank you. We'll need to wrap up um, for now. I want to thank all of our panelists for this great discussion from very diverse perspectives. Um, and um, hopefully we'll have the opportunity to engage with you again very shortly. Uh, I hope our audience found this relevant um, and stimulating to their academic work. And then on my behalf, Leah, Vanessa, and the Israeli Forum from Impact um, Economy, uh, I wish you um, to enjoy the rest of this session. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie, Megan. Thank you. Thank you, Annie.